Hello everybody, I'm Vivian Jenning, Application Engineer for Autopy Vessel, and welcome again to another What's New Edition. This major version 46 or 2025 comes with some long-awaited features that will make you want to install it right away. First, there is a new tool to modify any property from several notices at once. Appendix Y from ASME 8 has been finally implemented for metal-to-metal -metal contact flanges. Lifting accessories are now an independent component that can be added on its own, and linear or distributed loads can be now input in the software. This and much more will be seen in detail just now. In the previous versions, we had a change in our location option that appears in the menu Edit. There you used to be able to change the position of one or more nozzles at a time by subtracting or adding a number. The new feature will be located in the same place. It will just be renamed change nozzles because right now it will be doing much more than just changing the location. When open it in the program, you land on the tab with the main nozzle properties such as the location, orientation, diameter, and if you scroll, thickness. You can edit multiple nozzles at a time by selecting them in, with the control button, keeping it click, and making the change. As for the legacy feature of changing the location, you can still do that using the field at the bottom. Input the distance you want to add or remove, this one with a negative sign. Then click Apply. See that you can do the same for the orientation property. And there are four more tabs with different properties. The reinforcement, local loads applied on the opening, the flange characteristics, and the external loads applied on the flange. Everything just to click away. In the first phase of design, you may not need to go until the nozzle check or the fatigue analysis right away. The new setting allows you to choose the step up to which you want to analyze. This dialog will appear every time you run calculations by setting it as a preference. How do we then activate it? We go to the menu, file, we select preference, and in the set default data tab, it appears as the last option under the miscellaneous group, show advanced analysis dialog. Then you're all set to limit your calculation time to a minimum. Appendix Y from ASME 2023 Section 8 has been implemented for general usage in Autopy Vessel. It's an alternate method for flat flanges with metal-to-metal -metal contact. Let's look inside the norm. First, there is a classification of flanges assembly depending on whether they are identical or whether there is a cover. Class 1 assembly stays for two identical flanges that can be integral or loose type. Please notice that only ring joint gaskets are covered. Metal spacers are not available in the software. Class 2 groups two flanges assemblies that are not identical, where in the case of reducers, the inside diameter B2 exceeds half of the bolt circle diameter. Class 3 assembly is composed of a flange and a cover. If that cover has a central opening, it is considered in calculation as long as its diameter is less than one half of the bolt circle diameter. If openings are multiple or not central, they are simply ignored. Apart from the classes assemblies, there are also categories depending on the type of flanges. Category 1 stands for integral flanges, category 2 for loose flanges with hub, and then category 3 applies to loose type without hub. Please notice that this appendix does not cover the assembly of a flange and a tube sheet extended as flange. What conditions must be met to be within Appendix Y scope? First, ASME 2023 must be selected as the design code. Then, the option Metal to Metal Contact shall be selected in the Flange Properties dialog. And last, in the Gasket tab, this appendix will be used for ring joint type gaskets only. Calculations will then be done according to Appendix Y. Class and category will be explicitly indicated, as you can see on the screen. 
To help you optimize the thicknesses of your design, there's a new summary called Summary of Thicknesses and Stresses available in the results tree. If you click on it, you will see the table. That same table can be found with more details in the report where you can find the internal pressure and internal temperature conditions, as well as the thickness adopted and the minimal required thickness. Lifting accessories have been historically linked to the support, appearing as a tab of the support of your vessel, whether it be a saddle, an anchor, or legs. From now on, they are an independent component that can be added through the toolbar. They appear in the list of components and in the 2D. So in this model, there is no support, and yet you can add lifting accessories by clicking on the toolbar or in the insert menu. Once you have your locks defined, they will appear in the 2D. Right click on any of them, select the move option, and then drag and drop to adjust the location. Distance will appear at the bottom left corner. The dialog itself is accessible by double clicking in its 2D simplified representation or through the list of components. Thanks to this improvement, a vessel without support can still have its lifting analysis made. Guides or lateral supports that take horizontal loads in a vertical vessel are now available for vessels on brackets and anchors in general. In previous version, you had to go to the menu Insert, Support to display the table of guides, and it was only available for vessel on skirts. Now you will find it at the bottom of the Anchor Brackets dialog box. The representation in the sketcher is the same as before, but now guides can also be below the support's position. You can see how in this example we have three and they appear in red, slightly different from the support. Distributed loads can now be input. No need of workarounds to add the weight or any other load along a length. You can just do it as an external load. So, in previous version, you went to the menu Insert, then Load. The convention to define whether it was a mass or an internal component depended on the tag, as you can find out by going to the help associated to the tag. The new dialog is clearer and more powerful. First, you can add a distributed load, and second, the mass and internal components options are just there. Let's see how it works in a model. Click on the Loads icon in the toolbar or go to the menu Insert Load. The Loads dialog appears. Input a tag allocation. In my case, it will be applied to the skirt too, so below the reference line. Select Distributed Load Type. Input the length along which the load will be distributed. Then, for the case in question, input the corresponding total force. The load will appear in the 2D with this new symbol indicating the starting and end point. Then run calculation. In the equivalent B model report, you will be able to find the details of the load applied. Name, location, and magnitude. And of course, the foundation load summary will be affected as well as the summary of weights, but this latter only if the mass option is selected. Piping dimensions according to ASME B36.10 and .19 have been updated to the 2022 revision. You can find it in the Designs Parameter dialog as well as in the Nozzles Properties window. As a reminder, those properties are input and read from a customizable file. To find it, click on the gear icon in the toolbar or go to the menu Execute Manage Customization Files. Once in the Customizable File Management dialog, click on Choose File. Scroll down in the Explorer window and select DIMPIP. That's the name of the file with all the piping dimensions. The Excel sheet DIMPIP has several tabs at the bottom with all different revisions, now 2022 as the last one. The whole list of the standard is here. By default, not all rows are shown in the software. Only those with an X in the first column are enabled. You can, of course, change it anytime. That's how you can extend or reduce the list of diameters and thicknesses displayed in the nozzle properties or component properties dialog. NBT 47041 has been added as an anchors design method 
offering a comprehensive calculation under the Chinese GB code. This norm also covers the skirt head junction, but for that, remember to have the skirt analysis option checked. For the cases that you have some access holes defined and you're using the GB pressure code, analysis will be made using this new NBT norm. Several obsolete codes have been removed from the software. We have two pressure and tube sheet codes, including CODAP95 and BS97. We have a below code from 93, one flange standard, three wind codes, including ACE, British standard, and UBC, several versions. And last but not least, several seismic codes, as you can see on the screen. There are also novelties regarding the help. If you go to the menu, Help, only the tutorial is available now. The Quick Start Guide and the tutorial have been merged with the complete training manual. All in one, you can find everything in the same document using less clicks. Go check the updated content and exercises. There are three new how-to tutorials concerning the drawing generation. They can be found in the menu, Help, Content. In the tree located at your left, display the tutorials how to. The last entry corresponds to the drawings. Part 11, 12, and 13 have been added. The first one explains how to add a new block from scratch in the Drawing Customization Manager. Part 12 lists all existing blocks' names within the Drawing Manager. There you have the definition, when they can be used, and an example image of that view. Part 13 exposes all the details regarding COC1, a view of dimensioning the sketches for certain types of heat exchangers, with an example of each one of the types available. As a reminder, the blocks that these documents talk about are found in the Customizable Files Manager. Click on the geo in the toolbar or go to the menu Execute Customizable Files Manager. Then click on the Set Drawing Layout button. Open the Vuex file to see the current template. Here in the, these two boxes at your right, you can see the blocks that are available and below the ones that are in use. These are the names part 12 refers to. As for COG1 from part 13, open a heat exchanger template and go to the second sheet to find it. Since 2024, Autopy Vessel can natively generate DWG format drawings, both 2D and 3D. This feature avoids you the use of a third-party software such as AutoCAD Classic Version and BricsCAD. Due to their redundancy, these two dependencies will be removed in the near future. You are encouraged to use DWG export by default instead of the legacy alternatives. In order to do this change, you go to the menu File, Preference, and here in the CAS software name, you choose DWG instead of the other ones. And that's it. A little reminder for everybody. Since last version, you can choose among three report generation modes. First, the legacy design RTF that only allows you to access the results of the last model calculated. Second option, your report can have the model's name and be saved in the working directory, just beside design RTF as before. And then last option, have the model's name and be saved beside the models. These two last options allow you to keep a copy of the last results for that model. Results will not be overwritten and thus you can recover them anytime in the future. Option three will become the default one in a future version. For the time being, to do the change, you go to the menu file, Preference, Set Default Data tab, and here you have these three options we just talked about. For any doubt, just consult the help as usual. Last but not least, the summary of all the changes made in every version of Autobuy Vessel can be found in the README file. To access there, you go to the menu Help, About, and here you have the README button. You click there and you will see the list of all the announcements and the defects fixed. There are many changes in this version and there are more to come. We are planning some big changes for next year's release. 
An autumn version will be released by the end of this year, so remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel to be warned when that happens. As always, write any question to our technical support, look for the flood button in the toolbar. We are there to help you. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.